Thank you, and as a scholar, as a, a former uh, representative of international organizations in the field of uh, human rights, and just as a human being, I'm very concerned about the projects of uh, the solution of the Family Federation in Japan, and uh, I believe this tragic mistake for religious freedom, for democracy, and for Japan can be avoided. However, as a scholar, I should also say I'm very surprised by the fact that in a country such as Japan, theories that were dismissed more than 30 years ago in the West as a pseudo-scientific seems to be accepted at face value by the media and even by some uh, uh, politicians. In a seminal book about the academic study of uh, new religious movements published in uh, 2018, uh, Michael Ashcraft distinguished uh, uh, between the uh, mainline academic study of new religious movements and something he called cultic studies. And he clarified cultic studies are not part of accepted science and is just uh, something cultivated by a small group of uh, scholars uh, who uh, support the so-called uh, anti-cult movement. The academic discipline of the study of new religious movements was born in the 1970s uh, around three assumptions, uh, which are shared by the vast uh, majority of uh, academics in this field. Uh, first, that the notion of cult, as commonly understood as no scientific content, is just a uh, uh, polemical label used to discriminate against certain groups. Second, uh, the notion of brainwashing is also a pseudo-scientific concept. And third, yes, it's true, there are uh, religious movements that commit serious crimes, but to call them cults just confuses the issue also considering that movements committing serious crimes are also found within mainline religions. Just think uh, like the networks of pedophile Catholic priests, not talking of individual priests. There are real networks or terrorists who claim to operate in the name of Islam. In 1993, I introduced a distinction which is now widely used uh, between countercultism and anti-cultism. Countercultism is very old, and it's the attitude of uh, Christians in particular calling members of uh, other brands of Christianity heretics, and they mostly care about uh, theology. But then a more recent phenomenon is anti-cultism, which is a secular enterprise, which claim that uh, some groups uh, are harmful to society, particularly because they use uh, brainwashing. The modern anti-cult movement, which is different from the old uh, counter-cult movement was born in the United States in the late 1960s, when many parents who had their children in universities, when they heard that their children had decided to leave the university to become monks with the Hare Krishnas or full-time missionaries, for, they became very concerned and they want to uh, take back their adult uh, daughters and sons, uh, and here came the concept of brainwashing, which was older. Uh, the name brainwashing was coined in 1950 
by a CAA agent called Edward Hunter, who had the cover job that of a journalist in Florida. And Hunter was interested in politics. So for him, brainwashing was used by the evil Chinese and Soviet communists to convert people who were not communist into communists. Two American scholars, Edgar Schein and Robert J. Lifton, were commissioned by the government to look into the situation of people, Westerners, most of them Christian missionaries, who had been captured in China and submitted to these techniques that Hunter called brainwashing, and later of prisoners of war in the Korean War. Uh, some of them had signed declaration of conversion to uh, communism. And uh, both Shine and particularly Lifton are controversial scholars because of their reliance on Freud psychoanalysis, but they are scholars nonetheless. And uh, they came out uh, with the conclusion that the rate of success of the Chinese communists was low. Many of the American prisoners of war who signed declaration of allegiance to communists, they were just fake. They want uh, the North Koreans to stop torturing them. But when the war ended, it became clear these declarations were fake. And even in the Chinese uh, uh, concentration camp, uh, uh, with a massive use of torture, very few people really converted to communism. So there is nothing magic in these Chinese uh, uh, techniques. In a second phase, uh, some uh, psychiatrists uh, applied the theory of brainwashing to religion, and the leading English psychiatrist, in fact, the first president of the World Association of Psychiatrists, William Sargent published a bestseller called Battle for the Mind, in which he claimed that brainwashing had not been invented by the communists, but the first Christians. Actually, the conversion of St. Paul for him was a classical example of uh, brainwashing. And he quoted the Catholics and the Methodists as systematically using uh, brainwashing. So the book was a bestseller. But many of those who bought it were not persuaded because it was a generalized attack against all religions. So more socially successful was uh, uh, Margaret Singer. She was a clinical uh, psychiatrist in uh, uh, psychology, sorry, in uh, California, and she elaborated on the theories of Sarg and say. It's not true that all religions use brainwashing, but some do. And in fact, there is a distinction between good religions, they do not use brainwashing, and the bad cults, and they do use uh, uh, brainwashing. Now, if cultists are brainwashed, they should be de-brainwashed. And so uh, uh, Ted Patrick, who was a civil, he, he is still alive, he's almost 100 year old, but he was a civil servant in California and former owner of a nightclub. And he had a son who had encountered a controversial movement called the Children of God. So he invented a technique of counter brainwashing which consisted in the kidnapping in the streets the adult uh, members uh, of new religious movements, uh, uh, imprisoning them in a motel or else, and bombarding them with uh, negative information about the group until they surrendered their faith. And thus, you know, under different names, this technique of deprogramming, which uh, went out of fashion in the West, became extremely popular in Japan. Now, at the same time, scholars looked into brainwashing theories and on uh, conversion processes in the new religions. Uh, Eileen Barker 
in uh, uh, United Kingdom, wrote a book on the conversion to Unification Church in 1984. Jim Richardson wrote several important articles in the uh, United States, and uh, they came out with the conclusion that there was no brainwashing that groups like the Unification Church or Scientology, they didn't have any magical technique, and actually the number of those converted was not that high, so they didn't have magical technique, and brainwashing was not a scientific theory. So slowly, slowly, the anti-cult brainwashing uh, model went out of fashion, uh, 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 at least in academic circles. But they, that time, deprogramming, what in Japan you call forced conversion or forced apostasy, was a big industry. So lawyers and others in the United States tried to defend it. However, uh, those advocating for the brainwashing theory suffered a crucial defeat in 1990 in the Fishman case in California. The uh, Fishman case in California was a case of a guy who had been arrested for common frauds. But I say I'm not responsible because <coughs> as a, uh, when I committed my crime, I was attending courses of Scientology, so it was under brainwashing. And uh, the judge, called Jensen, did a very careful study and uh, concluded that the brainwashing theory is not accepted by the majority of scholars, so cannot be used in court. So after Fishman, the uh, brainwashing theories can no longer be used in the uh, United States in court cases about so-called cults, but they were exported to other countries. Even Margaret Singer could no longer testify in the US, she went to testify in France. And for different reasons, uh, in France, uh, the brainwashing and anti-cult theories were more successful than elsewhere, and in 2001, a law called Abu Picard, that somebody wants to import into Japan, was passed. But this law was criticized by human rights activists around the world. It's also very difficult to apply, because when you go to court, you see the idea of brainwashing or abus de faiblesse is very difficult to prove. So in conclusion, I believe it is important for the current debate in Japan that media and politicians realize that in most democratic countries, agreed with the exception of France, uh, both academics and courts of law regard the idea that cults use brainwashing as a pseudoscience. It's like the flat earth theory. You are free to argue about it, but it's not uh, part of accepted science. Of course, the problem is in popular media. The myth of the cults and brainwashing continues, but that's not a reason to use it for discriminating against religious minorities. And you can find more information in a book I published last year with Cambridge University Press. Thank you.